241 LS number three. I wanted to show some of the process of how the surface texture changes when you switch from your double cut burrs to your sanding rolls. Um, this port is not 100% finished, but the light shines best on that one, the way I've got everything setting. So I was just showing you the difference between a sanding roll texture and a double cut burr. If you look closely, you can see the double cut burr finish. There's nothing wrong with leaving it that way. Matter of fact, I have flowed heads that have that double texture, double cut texture to it, and it absolutely doesn't hurt anything. But customers have come accustomed to seeing a little bit smoother intake port, closer to the 80 grit finish. So when you start looking at, you know, this one's a little bit, a little bit more than the double cut burr, sorry. That's a little bit better than double cut, and then this one's a little bit farther along than that one. But you don't want to go any far, finer than 80 to 100. Some people like to go 60 grit on their intake ports. Um, I've noticed a lot of people online, they're really trying to sell mirror polishing your intake ports. But if you follow any of the traditional teachings and uh, logic, with cylinder head porting you never want your intake port to be mirror finished like i see a lot of these people online touting the you know the how great their head their porting is but they're mirror they're basically mirror polishing their intake port which can cause all kinds of puddling and fuel atomization and distribution issues i don't know for sure why but other than it sells people who don't know about airflow they look at that real shiny port and think oh my god this is the best port i've ever seen but that's not a true representation of a good flowing port that's not to say that they haven't opened up hogged out that port and they can get good flow numbers on a flow bench but in a wet flow situation you can run into def definite issues especially in a street car by having super mirror polished intake ports. Um, I'm hesitant to even go to the 80 to 80 to 100 grit. And the reason I add in 100 grit texture is because when you start with a double cut burr finish, that's almost perfect. I mean, there's absolutely nothing wrong with running a head that's that smooth. But people, like I said, they wanna see it a little bit prettier so I end up going to 80 grit rolls, but anybody who's done any of this work more than once, you're gonna know 80 grit doesn't really stay 80 grit for more than a few seconds. Cause as soon as you start really getting some uh, aluminum dust flying, that grit, the grit on that stupid thing's already smoothed out to at least a hundred. I mean, you can wear down a 80 grit and just darn near mirror polish something if you keep trying to use it long enough. But I just wanted to show a little bit more of the process. Um, this one's pretty dark, but it's it's been hit with the 80 grit. And you can see the difference. Like this is an 80 grit finish without the false representation of the light bouncing through the port compared to, oh my gosh, it's a glamor shot. I mean, you know, it looks good. I mean, when you get a nice smooth finish to your port, bounce light through it, it's gonna look pro. I mean, it's gonna look professional for pictures, videos, all that kind of stuff. But as long as you're in the 80, not I would not go any finer than 100 grit texture on your intake port, you'll be good to go. Um, you can see, I hope, if you look in this exhaust port, I've cleaned up every exhaust port to the double cut burr finish. Now my exhaust ports, I'll go to 120 or finer. Sometimes I'll go ahead and run a Scotch Bright buff. Uh, oh, they call it a Scotch Bright ball through these ports because I want to get them as smooth as possible without spending excess unneeded time towards mirror polishing because you're not going to help your flow enough to warrant mirror polishing those exhaust ports for an actual flow gain. The reason why people mirror polish their exhaust ports is merely to hold down 
carbon buildup, the smoother your exhaust port is, the uh, less carbon buildup it's going to have. Now, of course, anybody knows carbon's going to stick to anything because carbon is absolutely able to stick to just almost a uh, mirror finish over time. But what I wanted to show was you have to start out in stages. You go from your rough middle to, you know, medium to rough cut. Then you go to a uh, double cut burr. Then you start your sanding roll work. Some people like to use stones, but you can't really use stones effectively on aluminum because even if you keep them lubricated, they just gum up with aluminum really easily. So I find it easier just to use different uh, aggressiveness. I don't want to say aggressiveness, but different um, double cut burrs. Because I mean, if you can use, you see this one here, you can use a double cut burr like this. And as long as you, I use MIG tip, MIG, MIG tip dip to lubricate my uh, cutting burrs. But as long as you keep this thing cleaned out and keep it dipped, you know, just every so often, just lightly dip it in uh, MIG tip dip, you can work aluminum all day long and it won't plug up your, your burr at all. This is the type burr I use to get that finish you know what I mean so when you start doing head boarding you want to smooth out those you know hopefully you're not gouging too deep but if you want to start smoothing out your, your butcher hog type cutters that leave those big jagged uh, nicks in the ports no matter how careful you are to come back with a double cut and just slowly work that port out to where it works, uh, or I mean, sorry, until it gets the look and the shape that you're looking for. So, anyway, this was uh, part of the sanding roll work on those 241 heads, and part of the showing everyone how I'm getting the heads to flow and look the way they do. I wanted to make sure I had that added into this series on uh, installment number three. So, again, these are the LS 241 heads. You know, done and de done and delivered. As soon as I can uh, get the customer to come pick them up, uh, we had a long weekend, so hopefully he can make some time off this week to swing over and and grab these puppies. So anyway, everything's done, but finalizing my sanding roll work. I like to go over them and over them, fill my transition from my valve seat to my bowls, and make sure there's absolutely no lip no catching point for the air in or out make sure everything is um, up to my satisfaction so anyway installment number three on the LS 241 heads thanks for watching